Gibbon. <coughs> Feeling better? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. You saw nothing. <coughs> well, as I said, as soon as I heard the machine gun burst, I turned immediately to starboard. And then when, well, when I had the chance, I, I looked round, but no, nothing at all. You were flying above clouds, you say? Uh, yes, so obviously he must have dived into it. <coughs> yes? Well, I do remember, just before I heard the burst, I, I had a good look to starboard and a good look to port. Your tail? What about your tail? Yes. Oh, well, at least above me. Well, that's where the Hun usually comes from. And onto a parallel course before he fires, but there was nothing to starboard, you say? No, nor to port. In fact, definitely not. Well, if I had an observer, he would have spotted it. No news of my replacement observer, I suppose, is there? Yes. <coughs> Sergeant Mills, do you get that information? Yes, sir, I do. Good. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Go to the first stage. <coughs> yes, I will. <coughs> right, let's have a look at it. Two letters from HQ. Yes, sir. what about? Well, they seem to be querying our estimates for underwear. How oh, very thorough. This is what the other the... one, sir. What the hell's this? Details of personnel replacement, sir. How the hell do you know that? Size of the envelope, sir, and the weight. The casualty list to ask you for, please. Oh, yes, sir. I've been on the telephone to every RFC airfield in France, sir, and all the RNAS ones as well. Casualties over the last month. Check that, would you? There must be some mistake. Oh, it's not a mistake, sir. Mm. There's a covering letter from Lieutenant Conrad's uncle. Will he be Mr. Gallian's new observer, sir? Tell Mr. Gallion, Sergeant Farmer, I want to see them in the hangar. Now? Certainly not. In an hour. Now I'm going to eat. Corporal. Sure. Go and check my port flying ones. I got it, sir. And check the starboard ones. Move! This conversation never happened. Now, I've asked you two here because, God help us all, you're the two most experienced pilots we've got. Good Lord, I suppose we are, yes. Now, in the past three or four weeks, we've been having rather more casualties than usual. Now, these are the rough figures, the various RFC squadrons over the last two months. Now, I don't like working out mathematical odds. It's bad for morale, particularly my own. But the odds are getting worse. Yes, they're not everywhere, though, sir. I mean, some squadrons, they seem to be more or less constant. Well, yes, obviously, some squadrons come up against more opposition than others, but the general pattern... I'm not sure about this, but aren't the worst figures all in the squadrons with BE-2s? Yes, I think you're right. I want to explain why the casualties have got so much worse recently. Damn things are probably all falling apart. I wonder, do you think it's anything to do with the sectors we fly, sir? No, I don't think so, no. The, some squadrons have moved in the time and the pattern's more or less constant. Well, damn it, there must be some basic reason for it. Well, have either of you two noticed anything unusual over the past few weeks? Well, the Hun's got new arches that can reach about a thousand feet higher than the old ones, but that wouldn't account for it, would and it? you, apart from that incident oh. this morning, that is? I would accept. Yes. Well, I did see a froggy I didn't expect this morning. When? Well, it must have been about, uh, ooh, 15 minutes before that machine gun burst. Why the hell didn't you mention it before? I didn't think it was important. Are you sure it was a frog? Oh, undoubtedly. Monoplane, French Moran. So you saw the markings? Well, well, no, no, I didn't, actually, because it was miles away on the port beam, but it was definitely Moran. Could I borrow this piece, sir? Yes, yes, dear. Don't leave it lying around. I've got enough problems exuding an air of total confidence as it is. Well, think about it. Oh, uh, sir, um... About my uh, replacement observer. Any news as yet? Yes, indeed. It's arriving tomorrow. It's a Lieutenant Conrad. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, eh? He's casual. Sure. I nearly added mine into that list this morning. Oh, but I didn't fancy the jump. Makes a hell of a hole in the ground, so they tell me. Jump or burn, eh? Mm. You know, I really don't understand why they don't give us parachutes. Have we even developed one that works yet? Well, then they ought to buck their ideas up. I mean, good Lord, Leonardo da Vinci had a jolly good shot at designing one. He'd never be near a damn B 2 c And those chaps in the observation balloons, I mean, well, they have parachutes. We see them using them. That's different. Why? Well, balloons are stationary, more or less. Jumping out of a diving aeroplane's another kettle of fish. I mean, there's not much chance of clearing an aeroplane without fouling up your parachute as it opens. Well, at least we'd have a chance. As things stand at the moment, we face a gruesome choice of... Slow cremation or hurtling down to dig your own grave with the top of your skull. Yes, well, they'll give us parachutes in time, no doubt. We've got one that works for flyers. Yeah, I wonder. I mean to say, supposing I'd had a parachute this morning, 
You'd have used it. Oh, wouldn't you have done? Yes, I would. Yes, and I can think of oh, half a dozen other occasions when I'd have done the same thing, can't you? Without thinking too hard, yes, I can. So, between us, we would have crossed the RFC um, at least a dozen planes by now. And this damn death trap is supposed to be precious, is it not? So, do you wonder why they're not anxious to give us a parachute that really works? We'd all be floating down to Mother Earth at the slightest provocation, and France would be littered with burnt-out BE2s. You are getting cynical, aren't you? No, not a bit of it. I hope to hell that I live to suffer my old age, that's all. I mean, when I came in on fire this morning... Well, I've had the wind up before now, but nothing quite like that. Anyway, it's no news to you, is it? Well, I've got a letter to write. Alan. Huh? What else did my sister tell you about me? What do you mean, what else? Well, you were accused me of getting into a state about going back to the front. Yes, well, that's something she said. And when you met in Paris? Hardly mentioned. Oh, I see. Said all there was to say in that sneaky little evening you spent together in London, is that it? I have my own opinions of my friends. Oh. Uh, whatever your sister thinks about What you. did she say about me? Tell me. Well, she just said that you drink because you can't face up to things. There's nothing wrong with that. Sort of liquid parachute for all emergencies, eh? What's your opinion? Does it matter? No, not a bit. I'd just like to know, that's all. Well, I met your father in Paris. No, not for long, just a few minutes, but long enough to see that but what I mean is, me, being what I am, you know, born how I was... Uh, look, what are you trying to say? All right, all right. This guy can't put words in the proper places. I didn't go to Wheaton. Oh, stop being so damn British and tell me what's on your mind, will you? A man like your father, a brigadier general, a man like that must expect a lot from a son. Especially you been in the army and all. Well, me, nothing much was expected of me. Except to be a good blacksmith and, and look after my mum a bit. But you see, I was lucky. Oh, yes, I do see. Nerves of steel tempered in the family forge. You wouldn't have been frightened out of your mind, of course, if you'd been in that burning machine oh, yes, this morning. Oh, yes, I would. You Alan, know sometimes I sometimes you're so condescending to me. Do you know that? All I want to say is that if your father has a poor opinion of you, I don't share it, that's all. Sergeant Farmer getting up fish again? No, he is not. And I thank you to mind your own business. I'll be back as soon as I can. Only, I haven't had anything to eat since lunchtime. Oh, of course. Surgery cases are all quite quiet. If you want anything, I'll, I'll get be... sister. No, don't bother her. I'll be in the kitchens. Mrs. Hansworth said she'd leave some sandwiches. Unless those ambulance drivers found them. Down. Not far, not too far. Oh, God, don't let it burn. Report. Enemy battery now, my preference, 443791. Out of range of 18 pounders. Our artillery strike killing area almost deserted by enemy. Saw it, saw it clearly. Shh. Get a message back to Brigade. You're all right now. Go back to sleep. Don't stupid, they're not taking any notice! Please be quiet, you're waking everybody up. You tell them. Reference 443791. Yes. Only go back to sleep, you're all right now. You're in England. England? Yes.
happened to Freddy? Don't worry about Freddy. Of course I worry about Freddy. He, he was my observer. Best time to observe in the flying corps. He's fine. Freddy's fine. Nurse? Yes? You are a nurse, aren't you? Well, I'm training. I come in the evenings, that's all. Now, please be quiet, uh, or we'll wake everyone up. I'm sorry. Where am I? Lampton Grange. It's an emergency hospital. Where? Just outside Beckett's Hill. I never heard of it. Most people haven't. It's in Sussex. Now try and get some rest. What do you mean, Fred? He's fine. He's dead. Yes, I saw it. He stood up. And there was a smoke pouring out of the engine. And Freddy, all the left side of him. And then he jumped. I suppose he half fell. But we were so high. We were over 7,000 feet. He must have known what was happening. Don't think about it. Try and think about something else. There was else. the petrol all along the fuselage and the sparks oh, off please, the magneto. You must be quiet. That's it, you see. You have to decide. They don't give you a parachute. You either jump or you'll burn. Freddy jumped. Please, please be quiet. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I had to keep banking the aeroplane. Then the petrol wouldn't reach the sparks. That's how I managed to reach an airfield. Not my own airfield, some other airfield. Yes. And it didn't go up till after I'd landed. Yes. Not a bad bit of flying, really, looking back on it. I'm sure it was. Now, don't worry about it anymore. You're all right. You're in England. And it's the middle of the night and everyone's asleep. Oh, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not keeping you up, am I? No, but I'm the only person on the ward who's allowed to be awake. Ah. But I don't feel sleepy, though. You will if you try. Tell me a bedtime story. Oh, don't be silly. <coughs> you see... I feel pretty awful knowing that Freddy's dead. I've told you before, don't think about it. Marvellous chaps in the flying corps, you know. Yes, I know. I have a friend who's a pilot. Fancy that. Boyfriend, eh? No, just a friend. What's his name? Alan Farmer. I never heard of him. He's only a sergeant. Oh, there's nothing wrong with being a sergeant. Well, please, and some for the fine... last time, go to sleep. Yes. Will I see you in the morning? If you're good and go to sleep now. On that condition, then. rock a -bye, baby, on the Good night, nurse. Good night. He was burning. He was. I know. I saw it. Saw it. Hey, be quiet. God. Look, you're waking everybody up. You're all right now. You're in England. Uh, England. Holy Mary, Mother of God, have mercy on us poor sinners now and at the hour of our death. You Holy are Mary, safe Mother of God, have mercy on us poor sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. No, you are uh, safe now. Nobody knew, can hurt you. You're he knew, safe. He knew what was happening. He stood up. And the, the nose of the plane rose. And then he was gone. He must have known what was happening. 
Jump will burn. Freddy jumped. Next time I'll jump. Yes, jumping's better than burning. Next time I'll jump. Freddy! Freddy, next time I'll jump. Freddy! Freddy! Hey, Freddy! Next time I'll jump. Freddy! There won't be a next time. There's no legs. There certainly won't be a next time. Somebody told me the Germans have special words for it. Those who jump and those who burn. The Germans would have, wouldn't they? my windscreen a wipe, will you? See flight office, where is it? As you are. Where's Captain Triggers? He's just gone out, sir. Damn. And the mess? Straight through there, sir. Tell Captain Triggers he'll find me there, will you? It's Mr. Conrad, sir, the new observer. Is it? He's got the VC. So it said in the covering note. Well, he said he'd be in the mess, sir. Did he? Sergeant, sir? I want you to get me that casualty list. Well, and I, I want you to bear with me, Sergeant. Sorry, sir. And I want you to write opposite each casualty exactly where each aeroplane was headed and what happened to it. But in a lot of cases, we don't know. Those are the ones I'm interested in. Where's my flight? Yes, sir. And Mr. Conrad, sir? Oh, yes, Mr. Conrad. Perhaps you'd be good enough to tell Mr. Conrad that I'm waiting to see him. Try that again, I'll put you on a charge. Good Lord, I thought you'd broken off with her. I have. Still sending you parcels, is he? It's from my mother. Ah, so. Mum's on her side, is she? Yeah, she doesn't understand. Do you? Well, I thought I was fond of her, but it was wrong. Just hadn't told her. Well, you want to tell her about the 48 hours leave you spent in Paris with my sister? That should settle the matter. Charles. What? Can we forget that now, please? Oh, no, look at that. Yes, I know. My cousin sent me some shampoo. The same blessed thing happened. Hey, listen, have you got that uh, casualty list? Why? I just got an idea, that's all. Thanks. Hmm. Yes, I thought so. See the squadron here? Far fewer casualties. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. And no increase in the recent period, that's either. That's right. And these, and these two squadrons down here? Well, casualties, certainly, but nothing compared with the rest of the Corps. And do you know just what's different about this squadron? Well, they're FB5s. Exactly, because gun bus. And these other two squadrons here, I know, because I've been talking to some of the chaps. 
They both have FB5s. Quite a few squadrons have got a couple down. Yes, and I bet they're not being hammered to hell the way we are, either. Look, FB5s are escorts, right? Yeah. I and mean, they're supposed to go looking for trouble, so you'd have thought they'd have higher casualties rather than lower. Yes, exactly. Well, listen, I've got another recce, but uh, think about those FB5s. They're the answer somehow. I'm sure of it. Come in. Lieutenant Conrad. Oh. Lieutenant Conrad, well, Thanks. stand easy, please. Well, tell me, why did you decide to join the Flying Corps? Well, I joined the Army to fight. And in this damn war, the cavalry is just not getting a chance. Yes. So I, uh, I pulled a few strings. My uncle's a full general. Dropped quite a bit of rank, and uh, here I am. Yes, he sent a note. The fact that I used to be a lieutenant colonel and, uh, well, I don't want it to make any difference. It won't. Of course, I was lucky. I had the chance to serve in a proper war. Really? South oh. Africa. Oh, yes. But it seemed to me, things being what they are, the RFC was the next best thing to the cavalry. Really? I've arranged my billet. It's in the Chateau de Coutinard, just down the road. The Marquis is a friend of the family. You'll be billeted with the other officers. Yes, but I don't here. have time to send out messengers every time you're going to fly. And is that your car outside? Yes, I brought it over. Move it. If an aeroplane overshoots, that's usually when they finish up. Yes, it uh, wouldn't do the car much good having an aeroplane landing on it. It wasn't the car I was thinking about. Are you to be my pilot? No, you ought to fly with... You see, the point is, the best pilots won't be very keen to fly with someone who's had no experience. I've had a damn sight more military experience than any pilot you've got. Horses don't count. For one thing, they can't catch fire. Now, you'll fly with Sergeant Farmer. A sergeant? I should be able to teach you what you need to know. Dismissed. Don't forget your coat. Sergeant Farmer's Observer, Dick Bravington. He can fly with Mr. Galen. Right, sir. Oh, um, there was something else, sir. Yes, what is it now? Well, Corporal Jones asked me to tell you. He's seen to the knocking sound in the engine. But he said we had no spares. We haven't. He used a cocoa tin. Oh, my God, my lucky day. Flying with Mr. Galen and a cocoa tin. Why the hell does Triggers keep on swapping us around? Likes to keep us on our toes, doesn't he, sir? Well, I pity poor Sergeant Farmer, having to fly with a new idiot. Mr. Bravington? Uh, yes. I'm Peter Conrad. Ah, uh, the new chap. <laughs> Welcome to Sea Flight. I understand I'm to fly with your previous second in command. Second in? Oh, uh, you mean Sergeant Farmer? <laughs> second in command? That's a good one, isn't it, Sergeant? <laughs> well, there are only two of us. Sergeant? Sir? There are some troops lounging round outside this hangar, I believe you call it. Engine fitters and riggers, sir? Yes, well, they're improperly dressed. If I find them like that again, I'll put them on a charge. Yes, sir. And, Sergeant? Sir? Why aren't you wearing your cap? Well, I just popped out of the office, sir. Then you'd better pop back and fetch it. Yes, sir. Well, I'm beginning to understand why the General's staff complain about the lack of discipline in the Flying Corps. Yes, well, if you don't mind my saying so, I shouldn't judge us too soon. You'll find our flight commander's a stickler for the rules, you know. Captain Triggers came from the engineers, I gather. That's right. Where they judge a man by his expertise, not by the cut of his breeches. He's the best flight commander in the Corps, and we'd all willingly die for him. Yes. They warned me about that, too. The bravado and the comradeship. Now tell me, where's my mount? Your what? You'll find your machine outside on the field. Thank you. I shan't need this, Corporal. A manlicker, the finest hunting rifle in the world. Give me a leg up, Sergeant.
I'm ready. Switch is off. Switch is off. Fuel on. Throttle closed. Fuel on. Throttle closed. Suck it in. Throttle set. Throttle set. Contact. I think Mr. Conrad may have got the pilot. Well, he said he had, sir. Can't be sure. And dropped into the cloud. I see. When we landed, he told me he got the German in the head. If he did, he's got the most unusual eyesight. Yes. And another thing, it must have been a pretty good shot or a fluke. Yes. More to the point, you were on a reconnaissance mission. You were told not to engage the enemy. You were told to avoid him, weren't you? Yes, sir. In a B2, you have less than a 50-50 chance of survival against any Hun you might meet. Yes, I do know that, sir. I was obeying Lieutenant Conrad's orders, In this sir. flight, I give the orders. <laughs> Okay, maybe take the handkerchief out. He didn't bring the handkerchief out at all. <laughs> the knickers. <laughs> oh, you should have seen his face. It was a picture. La da da dum ba dum ba dum. Hey, oh! <laughs> they were only playing leapfrog. They were only playing leapfrog. They were only playing leapfrog when one stop of the jump right over the other stop of the back. Oh! Right. I'll tell you why I've called you here together. Now, you all know the squadron's been suffering casualties. Casualties we can't explain. Now, I've checked with other squadrons. Our own local trouble seems to be in this area here. Give or take a few square miles, half a million Huns. And it could be anything. Has anybody got any ideas? Well, we were over that area this morning. Not of Archie fire, but nothing else. I've marked the known Archie positions here. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. There is a Hun airfield at Tompleuve, although well, nobody's seen anything unusual there as yet. Well, no one survived to tell us they had. Actually, that was where I saw the Moran this morning, about five or six miles south of Tompleuve. A Moran? Mm. Well, was it one of ours or a froggy? Oh, I don't know. I was too far away to see the markings. It might be worth checking with the French squadron, sir, see if they've seen anything. Yes. Yes. Anyway, in the future, I'll try and arrange that you reconnoiter in pairs, like courting couples, perhaps for a brief on me. <laughs> anyway, in the future, I want you to take the long way home, avoid the area around Tompleuve, understood? And under no circumstances, anybody to fly over there alone. If there's something there, I want one aeroplane at least to come back and tell me what it is. Right, thank you. Dismissed. Thanks, sir. We don't know what we're looking for. Oh, masterly understanding. Oh, if no one's seen what causes the casualties, I mean, if not even the infantry. Well, I've got a phone. What are you talking about? Well, we've got cameras now. Oh, splendid idea. You mean sort of uh, what the butler saw from 8,000 feet, eh? No, no, I'm serious. <laughs>
I ordered Sergeant Farmer to attack the enemy, and he flatly disobeyed. Sergeant Farmer? It wasn't an enemy, sir. It was a Moran. British or French? We weren't close enough to see the markings. I Mr. saw... Gurney. Well, I thought that it was the same Moran that I saw this morning. Mr. Bravington. Yes, a Moran. Oh, damn it, you could see the German cross on its tail. What? Oh, don't be so damn silly. I certainly couldn't. Are you all blind? I even saw some lettering. E.P. something well, well, I know who's right in a few seconds. They're developing the plate. The point is, I gave the sergeant an order and he disobeyed me. Is there no damn discipline in this corps? It's not a question of disobeying an order, sir. I don't attack French machines. Our orders were to stick together and I certainly do not shoot at Moran. Sergeant Mills has been making inquiries. The French say they don't have any Morans flying in that sector. Well... Then it must be one of ours. Well, the Huns could have captured a Moran, then it would have crosses on its tail, so you would all be right. Come in. The plate, sir. Oh, thank God for that. You said you wanted it right away. Thank you. So much for aerial photography. Well, it looks like a monoplane. It has to be a Moran. All this talk of Morans. What does a Moran look like, anyway? On the wall. Well, it's absolutely different. The tail thing's different. The engine thing's different. The whole damn thing's different. Okay, let me have a look at this. Well, it looks like a Moran to me. The machine I saw was not that machine up there. Robertson and Kerry Jones. And the machine from A-Flight. That was on the long reconnaissance, too. Oh, I wonder who's right. Is it a Moran or some other machine, as Peter Conrad insists? Well, with respect, sir, isn't that rather unimportant? Unimportant? What chap's been killed and no evidence at all as to what's been happening to them? <laughs> yes, sir, it's important. Of course it is. But that's exactly what I mean. Well, what sort of machine it is, whether it's a Moran or some other machine we know absolutely nothing about, well, that seems to me to be entirely beside the point. Well, the question is, how does it manage to shoot down so many of our machines? And without being seen? I mean, well, you were attacked by it yourself, sir. Well, I couldn't swear to that. But you were attacked? Yes. But you saw nothing? That's right. Well, we'll solve it soon enough, I expect. Maybe, sir. You got some theory about it, Sergeant Mills? Well, I've got an uncle in the Navy, sir. Oh, Lord, we've heard all about him, haven't we? Well, he reckoned someone would invent it sooner or later. And the Germans, well, you have to admit it, they are damn clever. Trust them to be the first to use it. Use what, for heaven's sake? The death ray. The what? H.G. Wells. Who? Oh, God, not him again. Where's Captain Triggers? Getting quietly drunk in the mess, I imagine. Hey, Mr. Carey Jones and Mr. Robertson didn't come back from the long reconnaissance. Oh. Well, I reckon I know why too. He wanted to see me. Flight, sir. My mother sends it to me. She must have forgotten this one. There's something very interesting it's been here, sir. for stirring the Christmas pudding. There was some jam yeah. in the parcel, sir. Oh, I've already eaten. Read it to me. Sir. Firing with a machine gun between the blades of a propeller revolving at something like 1,200 RPM strikes one as a very tricky, not to say risky, pastime. Mm. But I have it on good authority that it is the latest exploit of Roland Garros, the famous French pilot, and resulted in bringing down two taubes, according to Mr. Henry... Wait, um... What date's this magazine? March the 28th, sir. Oh, March. Well, that's five months ago. Sir, he goes on to say then, sir, according to a patent specification in a German paper, an inventive genius over there has a device enabling a machine gun to be fired through the disc arc of the propeller. Now, wait. Um, you say a Frenchman, Garros, did this. Yes, sir, what it but says, it's sir. German paper that mentions the patent. Yes, sir. Listen, sir. A device enabling oh. a machine gun to be fired through the oh, disc arc... Oh, sit down! Sir. 
disc arc of the propeller by gearing the trigger of the quick firer to the engine so that when the propeller blade is in line with a gun, a lock prevents the shot being fired until the blade is passed out of the line of fire. Yes? What does it say? I can't read after that, so it's covered in jam. I uh, thought yeah. the Germans had this device. If the Germans have this device, they've invented the way of arming an aeroplane that makes everything we're doing a suicidal waste of time. Yes, sir. I tell my men to maneuver the aeroplane so that the enemies flying directly towards them do that and you're safe. And it's damn hard. You have to be a damn good pilot to keep the enemy in that position. That's what occurred to me. What I'm really telling them is to use all their skills to put their aeroplane in the one position which makes them absolutely defenseless. And the enemy's lethal. Well, I thought that's why so many of our B2s might just With our most experienced pilots. If the enemy can get right on top of us before they open fire, because our chaps thought they were safe. But of course, and of course none of them get back to tell us what's happened. They'd all be on fire before they knew what was happening. Well, it was over the German side of the line, so we'd never see what happened even from the ground. And there's another thing Mr. Gellian noticed. The FB5 squadrons, well, they, they have fewer casualties. The pusher with the forward fire knew it. Yes, so the Huns fight shy of them. Well, how do we find out why they... Flying cars being shot out of the sky from a document labelled Most Secret Sent Towards Squadrons. From a briefing from the Royal Arthur Air Tour Factory that make all our aeroplanes. We learned from an English magazine that's required reading for every aircraft designer on Earth. Must be on the top desk of every senior officer in the Flying Corps. But we don't get sent a copy when it's published. We get ours bloody months old. Come on in jam! <laughs> Dear God, how many more of us have to die before we learn? Very quiet yourself tonight. That friend of yours in the Flying Corps, he'll write soon, I'm sure. He has written. I thought of all sorts of reasons why he wanted to break it off. But I never thought of the obvious one. He had a 48-hour leave in Paris. He met the sister of a friend. Anyway, at least he was honest enough to write and tell me. Ready, sir? Good, good. Uh, may I ask you, sir, with respect, like, uh, what do you want with this? I'm told by Corps headquarters that the secret of air warfare is fastening bits of metal to your propeller. But why, sir? If you mount a machine gun that fires through the propeller out, the bullets have to be deflected or you shoot your own propeller off. Get off the Frenchman. He shot down two Huns this way. He flew him around, didn't he? Yes. Well, single-seater, a bigger engine, and only two blades to the propeller, not four. That's right. Well, with respect, sir, these plates are bound to impair the efficiency of the propeller. Just do it. Get a move on. Right. Same one mechanical windmills make an hour. being able to fire forward if the damn thing won't fly. I'm not ordering you. If you volunteer, you'll do exactly as I say. Do you understand? Sure. Yes, sir. 
I believe the Germans have a synchronized machine gun firing through the propeller arc. Now, I don't think there are many of them. Not many of us would be alive by now. I think you may be right. The Germans have a new machine. Looks like a French Moran is equipped with this gun. Now, I've checked with Corps HQ. They think I'm talking nonsense. Cut. So we need proof, one way or the other. I'm going to fly over this airfield at Tompleuve, see if I can provoke the enemy into attacking me. Well, what do you want us to do then, sir? I want you to keep your distance and watch. Your job is to come back here and report. Thanks, sir. I'd like to volunteer, please, sir. Good. Naturally. No matter. Whatever happens, you will not intervene. If I'm right, the enemy will shear off the moment he thinks there's another arrow, Allied aeroplane. and might report what's happening. Mr. Conrad, I'm asking you not because of your VC, but in spite of it. I want you for your eyesight. Sergeant Farmer, I'm asking you because I think I can trust you to be sensible. Not try and be a hero. Enough heroes on the casualty list. Let's go.
you were right, sir. Yes. This is getting to be a habit. You saw that, didn't you? A machine gun firing through the propeller arc. Yes. Mounted just to the right of centre. They can't deny it now. I thought I told you two not to intervene. Doesn't anybody on this flight know how to obey an order? 